Welcome back to the shop. Today's video is going to be an overview of my 2017 KTM Adventure 1090R bike build. So similar to the previous video that I did on my KLR650, I'm going to give you an overview of all the stuff that I've added to this motorcycle, my thoughts and opinions on those items, and I'll keep a running total over here in the corner for you so you can keep track of how this bike goes from 14,699 MSRP to just north of 17,000 and continuing to climb because there are still some things that I have planned that I haven't ordered yet for this motorcycle. So in case you're waiting for the GPS series, don't worry, that's still going on. Um, just had a few videos that I had to get to here first. So as always, if you haven't already, be sure to click that subscribe button, click the bell for the notifications when we upload videos, and be sure to share this with your friends. Let's get started. Okay, so to get started, the first thing I usually add to all of my adventure motorcycles is a GPS. I like to have them hardwired and I like to have them in my line of sight. In this case, I've gone with a SW Motec mount. It mounts up to the dash and around the dash cluster. It holds the Garmin amps mount really well and then puts the GPS right up here behind the windscreen. And then subsequently, I hardwired into the accessory socket that comes on the KTM 1090 standard. So I did have to disassemble the front end to get into that wiring harness, but I had to get in there for some other reasons, which we'll go through in a bit here too. So I'm really happy with both those options. That's the SW Motec GPS mount, and then the Garmin Amps mount, which is the cradle that actually holds and then powers the Garmin unit. So really like those options there. Sticking with electronics for just a minute, uh, one of the things that they left off of the 1090, which was on the 1190, and supposedly it was for cost cutting measures, uh, rather disappointing. It was only a $12 part directly from KTM. In fact, it is the 12 volt power outlet directly from the 1190. Uh, thanks to one of the posters on ADV Rider, they gave me the part number for that and I was able to just order it directly from KTM, fits right in the hole, connects right up to the wires that are down in there. Uh, some people have had some luck just fishing the wires out. I was not so lucky. So while I had the front end torn apart for the other installs, I did that 12 volt as well. There's a panel over here, a couple of screws, you take that off, and that gave me access to get it in there. So the 12 volt is something that I like to have on all my motorcycles to power cameras or other equipment that I'm taking with me. After the electronics, one of the other things that is important to add to any motorcycle that you're going to use for adventure riding are the fixed hand guards. Again, I went with the Tusk fixed hand guards. These are the ones that come with the integrated turn signals. However, I've left the turn signals out for the time being. Uh, KTM mounted the factory turn signals up high enough that I don't have as many concerns if you were to drop the bike in damaging those. So I may or may not actually add the integrated turn signals into this slot here, but even if I don't, I'm happy with these uh, hand guards and I have that option available to me should I decide to do it at a later point in time. Continuing on with protection, like any adventure bike, an aluminum skid plate I think is really important. There's a couple different options. I opted for the KTM uh, Performance Parts Catalog uh, skid plate and that was relatively easy to mount up. There was a little bit of effort involved in finding the right spacers because the kit is made for a couple different bikes. So it mounts up here by the crash guards and you just need to make sure that you take your time and find the spacers that are right for your bike. I did not have to take the crash bars off at all. I just had to pull the bolts at the top because they go through the spacers and get replaced by the bolts that come in the kit for the skid plate. So, so far I'm really happy with that option there. Another item that came directly from the KTM Performance Catalog were these rally pegs. Uh, I've been really happy with those, although the KTM 1090 does come with off-road oriented pegs. These pegs in particular are much wider than stock, and the openings here are subsequently bigger, so the dirt and the debris falls down through the peg a little bit easier than the stock ones. It also gives you a lot of leverage when you're trying to weight or balance the motorcycle. So, um, I'm real, real happy with the rally foot pegs on here. So one of the next items that I had to do, because in the first 48 hours of ownership, I managed to break my OEM left-hand mirror. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put a card up top. It was a simple drop. I don't know if it was from hitting the ground or if my foot caught it as I was exiting the bike, but the OEM left-hand mirror broke on me. I knew I already wanted these double-take mirrors, so I went ahead and I ordered those up. 
I just want to give a shout out real quick to the guys over at Double Take because they have a fantastic product and then also they have fantastic customer service. After ordering these mirrors and mounting them on the motorcycle, I was also planning and now have it mounted, which we'll cover in a second, a cruise control unit, which goes on the left hand mirror. And because of that, I needed the riser that would be on the stock mirrors and that's reverse threaded, which the ball end for the double take mirrors is not. So I reached out to them. They immediately sent me out um, an aluminum spacer that would allow me to use the double take mirrors with the cruise control controller underneath that mirror mount. So that was really great of them to do. They didn't have to, nothing wrong with the product. So just fantastic customer service. Can't say enough nice things about those. And these double take mirrors just work really, really well. They don't vibrate or shake at highway speeds. They tuck in real easy. They use this Ram mount. Um, it's just a really great system. So I would highly recommend these on any adventure bike. And again, the guys over there are really great to work with. So reach out to them, get you a set of these double take mirrors. So one of the upgrades that I can't really show you, it's underneath the seat here and it's a small little device. It's the KTM dongle. What that dongle does is it retains the modes that you had the bike set in when you turn the ignition key off and then turn it back on. Highly recommend that as almost an immediate purchase if you're doing any off-road riding at all. On my other motorcycles, it's always been an annoyance, but with the KTM, it's even more annoying because the rider mode, the traction control, and the ABS are three different settings. So every time you turn the ignition key off, you have to navigate through all these menus to get back to where you might have had your off-road settings. The dongle fixes that. Whatever you leave them at when you cycle the ignition key, they will stay there. That is intended for off-road use only. They've got to do a legal disclaimer. So when you turn the bike on, you will have to dismiss the not legal message. Um, but that's still much easier than going back through all those settings each and every time you start the motorcycle. From there, we move on to luggage, and I started off with a tank bag. Uh, if you've seen my other videos on the Triumph, I used to run a magnetic tank bag. A, it doesn't work so well in off-road conditions because the magnets can't hold it due to the vibration, and B, it would not work at all on the KTM because of the fact that it does not have a metal tank. Uh, it has a plastic tank, and it has a plastic tank shroud. So I had to find an alternative option there. I came across this SW Motec bag, and I really liked it. I liked the ring system. Before I got this bag, I actually had a Givi bag with a similar system, but I didn't like it as much because the ring for the Givi bag was much, much larger. Uh, it seemed to intrude more when you're trying to fill things up like gas and a pump. And just overall, I wasn't happy with the way the bag fit the motorcycle. So I returned that one and I ordered up this SW Motec one. I've got a friend that has the same unit, so I had the opportunity to see it in person before I ordered that. Um, it's got a quick release, so basically whenever you stop the gas pump, you just pull that lever, tank bag comes right off, gives you real quick access to refueling, and then you can just set the tank bag back on. The other reason why I really like this system is because these caps are specific to the motorcycle. So when I ordered this, I actually ordered one for the KTM and then one for my Triumph, and what that allows me to do is quickly and easily take the bag on either bike by just snapping it on or off. So I really like that, and again, I'd highly recommend that one as well. Okay, so continuing on with luggage, I had the Tusk Panniers on other motorcycles. I've been real happy with them. They're a really simple mechanism, which is one of the things that I like about them. They're a spring-loaded pin. Simply pull this in the back, the bag comes right off. There's a locking knob on the inside that threads in. Um, so I just like those. The rack fit up really nicely to the bike. You simply remove the factory KTM mounts for their bags, put these in their place, thread right in. There's a cross member back here that supports the two, and you're pretty much done. So I'm real happy with these panniers. After buying the KTM, I had a few prerequisites before buying it, which were to make sure that I didn't lose any of the luxury options that I had on my Triumph. So next up, I ordered heated grips. These are the KTM Performance Parts Catalog heated grips. I'm really happy with them. They were an easy install. They plug right into the factory harness. You control them through the left handlebar. They heat up really, really nice. There's some cheaper options out there, but overall I'm really pleased with the, the KTM grips here. Sticking with the theme of not willing to give anything up that I had available in terms of luxury items on my Triumph, the next item on the list was a cruise control. This is the unit from MC Cruise down in Australia. 
and I've been extremely happy with it. The instructions are perfectly detailed. I was a little anxious at first just because of how many wires there were, but they give you great instructions on how to route everything, where to zip tie it, all those type of things, and it plugs directly into the OEM harness in all the spots. There's no additional wheel sensors or anything like that that you have to install with this latest version. So it was completely plug and play, works perfectly well. Accelerate, decelerate, if you press those buttons, it's a one mile an hour increment up and down, just like you would expect in your car and just like it worked on the Triumph. So I'm really happy with that one there. So I think that covers everything that I've done to the bike so far. If I have missed anything, I'll be sure to add it in post-production. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. There's a few items that I still have planned, haven't put them on here yet, so I'm not including those in the cost. Um, but the big things would be the slip-on exhaust system and potentially either a heated or a more comfortable seat. KTM, I think, knows that most people will be riding standing up a lot on this. So this seat is not as comfortable as my Triumph seat was on longer highway miles. So I may consider doing that. The slip-on exhaust is high on my list, and there's a couple of other items here and there. So those are things that I'm considering. Those are the things that I've done. Hopefully this has been helpful if you either own or are thinking about buying a KTM to give you an idea of what you might want to add to your bike, to give you a breakdown of the cost, to show you what I've got into this one here. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to give it that thumbs up, be sure to share it with all of your friends on social media, and be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification so you get updated as soon as we upload new videos. Until next time, take care and ride safe.